Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman and the committee. Yes, my name is Edward Sternisha, and I do see a lot of media here. And yet, as a, I'm a criminal defense attorney, so I'm, I feel like I'm even least popular, but I do appreciate some of the comments that have come up. Um, I, but to be fair, I have been in law enforcement um, for 25 years now. I've worked in some capacity, um, whether it's uh, in the police business, private investigator, um, an attorney, one way or another. I use FOIA every day. Every case I have, I ask for the 911 tape and the dash cam. And, and that's coming up next. As, as you recognize, the dash cam is going to be, be the follower to this. <clears throat> Everyone in, in this room is in some kind of relationship, has been in some kind of relationship throughout their life, in their life. I had a case just recently, and I'm going to talk fast so I can get, get through this for you. I had a case just recently out of Kentwood. Um, this is a bad breakup. Any one of us could go through a bad breakup, and this is what happened. The guy brings us all her stuff back to her, and all he wants is the cell phone he bought from her, bought for her four days before. She doesn't want it. He leaves, she calls 911, claims she was beat up. He's arrested for domestic violence, okay? Just for the record, she has multiple criminal convictions for fraud, among other things, okay? But through my investigation, I learned that. But for the 911 call, which I have with me today, but for the 911 call, this man could have been wrongly convicted. His kids, who are three young children, who are uh, lost their mother earlier in the year to suicide, now he's dating again, and this is what happens, the jury agreed with me because they got to listen to the tape, the 911 call, which the prosecutor did not want them to hear. The, the critical piece was the 911 and the dash cam. The two together showed the jury the real story. So I'm for protecting victims, but sometimes we don't know who those victims are. In this case, the victim was Mark. And any one of us could, could sit in Mark's chair at the defendant's table just simply from a bad breakup because somebody was angry about something. It can be said, yes, well, defense can get that anyway. Every case I file a, a discovery request with the prosecutor and a FOIA with the police because the prosecutor's office will say, you got to get that from the police. If it was not for FOIA, police would not give things out. It's theirs. We don't want to give it out. FOIA makes them have to give it out. And we need that. We need it to be able to, for that, checks and balances in our system so we can find out what really happened. I have guilty clients. It's just a matter of the way it is. Sometimes the deck's stacked against me. Sometimes it's not. Before I came here today, I was in court on another case, the 911 call. It, the caller says to the police, and he just got out of prison for attempted murder. She wanted him, that she wanted the police to hurry up and get there and know he's a bad guy. It never happened. He'd never been in prison, never for any assault. Now, he was in jail for child support a while back. But the point is, sometimes we have to be able to listen to the 911 call. We have to be able to, to uh, have access to these things for that checks and balances system to work. We can't let the government decide what we can have and what we can't have, because any one of us could be sitting at that table. It, it's that simple. Now, the, the one thing I do want to mention is the House Fiscal Agency's um, uh, analysis, they only use Ottawa County, and it's a small county, but it's in my neck of the woods, and it shows two, last year 227 FOIA requests for 911. The majority of those, 91 of them were for police, 75 for defense attorneys. Okay, we're trying to keep that system working. Only five are media, and I didn't hear any stories of anything bad over there. Okay, 222 other people somehow properly were requesting FOIA for 911. Now that's a small county. Think of some of your, some of your areas, some of the larger areas. If we, if we don't release that and you say, well, we, you can get a court order. There's 222 more court orders bogging down Ottawa County and a Kent County tells me they do 1,500 uh, FOIAs a year. It, the expense, the fact that some of those 911s are gonna be erased, it's just, it's just not practical to do it. I, I have young children, you know, I don't want them seeing what's on TV, so we don't even have one. But that's my choice. But I just think that this is something that's really going to hurt the system and, and it can really affect us all. And I thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk today.